Okay. Okay. Call this meeting to order. Select board meeting for Thursday, November 2nd, 2023. First order of business. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, any uh, public comment? One question that has been brought to me by a couple of Highgate residents. When you do the plug-in station over to the arena, I had a couple Highgate residents ask, who pays for the electricity? We do. You do. That was like me. the electricity for the charging station? Yes, for the cars. Well, if they're going to plug their car in, they're going to pay to charge their car. With a, with a credit? I would assume so. Yes. Okay, because yeah. this yes. has been brought to my attention by two or three heavy residents, and I says I will bring it up at the select board so they will be charged on their credit card. Is that yeah, they pay for the use of yeah. Power. That's what I because I I've been asked that question by two or three residents. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's not free charging. It's they yeah. have to use their credit card. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all. That's we do get a power bill every month. Or like the one in the park and ride. There's a we're still okay. paying the electric bill for the actual station. So we pay for that one over there, Shelly? We pay well, yeah, everything we are plugged into we have a, an electric bill for. Okay. So yeah, but well, I guess what I'm saying is, is it the same thing? It's going to be a, thing. it's so going to a credit card over there too. Yeah. Yeah. They pay to charge their car. Okay. And then okay. we get a kickback from it on that particular charging okay. station. Uh, it, it doesn't cover the electric bill that we pay, but <laughs> yeah. we know it is a small kickback. From now it. I know because it has been brought to my attention by quite two hundred residents, and I said I will bring it to the board and ask them. So that way, there I can let them know they are charged on their credit card. And okay, that's all I need to know. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Any other public comment? Uh, yes, we um, our the situation where you know where we live, right on the horn here. Um, every year, we get people that go off the corner there. And last year, I think was the worst. We had three in the fall, like, uh, and then winter, and we actually had uh, a pretty serious accident. One of the girls actually went into the windshield. We had to call 911. Another one, I tried to pull out my tractor. We couldn't even do that. We had to get a, a tow truck. And they plowed, and there, there, there are times people have gone off there and didn't even see them. Where they've gone off, they've broken the, the sign, the historical sign, plowed into that, broke that, and then they were gone. Um, but we're, you know, it's, it's gotten to the point where they go off that corner, and, and, went, and now we're going into the winter again. There's two, there's two things. First of all, they go too fast uh, to go around that corner. And we, I know there's a sign there, turn, and everything, but people don't pay attention. So roads get icy. And the other thing is that in wintertime, they sand. So even if you're not going real fast, you start sliding on that sand. If you go a little too fast, you're going to slide around that corner. And so before somebody gets killed there, um, we've talked about talking to my neighbors, uh, the guy is, and I wonder, can we put a guardrail there? So at least they'll bounce off the guardrail and not go down into that gully. Because that's when, when they go down that gully, that's when, um, that's when people have gotten hurt. I mean, we had the, the, uh, the town this morning, I guess, the power line, not the power line, the guidelines that hold the pole. They get ripped out and last, person that went in there, they ripped out the bottom of this truck they had to, and so I guess they were repairing those. But you know, we one of these days somebody's gonna go down there and, and get killed. And not to come back out. And not come back out. Right. And and you know, we're we're right there. I mean I've tried I've helped people get out in the past. And it seems like it's getting worse. It seems like, you know, we have Every year we'd have at least one, two, but this past year we had three, and now you know, we're getting ready to go into the winter again. And it's like, are we gonna wait till somebody gets killed before something, we do something? 
or can we do something new? I, I was thinking, you know, we've had a couple of different ideas, um, like a, you know, a, a flashing light or something. But I think if there's a guardrail, um, at least they won't go down into that gully. You know, they'll bounce off of that, and because uh, that's the dangerous thing. Once they go around that corner and they go off in that gully down below there, that's that's where people have gotten really hurt and, and, and a lot of damage. Yeah, unless one put speed bumps there. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would slow them down. No, that's uh, speed bumps would yep. work and work and stuff. So yeah, I'm just I'm requesting them, you know, before it's too late. Um, I don't think a, a guardrail can be too difficult. Uh, just right around that corner to keep them from going down into that gully. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna go off again. I, I just know it. I mean, it's been going on for years. Um, yeah. We'll uh, we'll talk about it and uh, we'll talk about it with the the f foreman of the town and uh, we'll uh, we'll let you know what we come up with. But I had spoken with Butch um, last spring. When, yeah. You know, at the end of the winter. Uh, he was down here just sweeping, you know, getting the, yeah. you know, and we talked about it, and he said he was going to talk to somebody here about it. Uh, and he said he did, because the next time I saw him, I said, did you bring it up to the, the board? And he said, well, yeah, I talked to somebody. I don't know who he talked to. But he, they, they don't seem to listen to me. He says, uh, so I says, would it help if I went? So here I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we go into the, you know, the, the heart of the winter and the ice and the snow, which is around the corner, yeah. Um, hopefully, something could be done. Yeah, we'll uh, see what we can do, and uh, we'll, we'll let you know what we come up with. Okay, appreciate that. Actually, I don't know where you guys live. We're down the Yeah, there's Santa. Right there. It's been a bad corner for hours. Yeah, we're right on the corner. Oh, that corner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what's happening? They're, they're coming this way. A lot of there's the um, so north that way. Um, no sign can be there. They just everybody's in route seven in the interstate over there. Yeah, coming around, coming down around here. Yep. Our farm is right here, right? But, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, coming around this corner. Um, they kind of, kind of go straight, and they then just they, keep going they get off. They can't get back on the road. Yeah. Once they start, it's once like their tire gets caught or something, what they said. Okay. Right? Isn't that what I know the, the girl that really just got hurt really bad, like I haven't seen anyone. She had a hole in her head, a hole in her cheek, and it was like mm -hmm. oh, when I hit the point of view. She was right in the windshield. Okay. Of course she didn't have her. Do you want a guardrail on the part where they're going straight? Just so the power's not looking on the end. Yeah. Okay. Because I know that there's fire trucks going out there before. Yeah. No, actually you're talking about the brook there. There's that's it, it's a hook, mm -hmm. and it's it's all speed, and people are just going too fast. Yeah. And, but they, it does hook. Yeah. Because it kind of goes off on I, I I don't know the road it goes off on. Ballard. Oh, yeah. Ballard. Yeah. It goes yeah. off on Ballard, but then it hooks. There's a. Yeah. It, it, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so right the there, they catch them. Yeah. So would the guardrails be on your side of the, by your house, or be on the other no, side? Be on the other side. The other side. Yeah. Be on the other side of that hook. Right down. The, okay. There's an yeah. old stone okay. wall there, I think. Um, and it, it's, yeah. So they're speeding down here and they're going straight. Okay. So they're going straight. Yeah. Yeah. They could too. I don't know if we have those uh, sharp curved head signs. There are signs. There is one. Yeah. It's really pretty high, though. It's like, I don't know if people really. People don't. <laughs> people don't know. And that's it's usually young people who don't pay. Gone that they might be one of those situations where that son I was talking about the last meeting I was at about the solar yeah. that the blinking light flashing. Yeah. the flashing yeah. light that catches right. people's attention. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something like that might be yeah. helpful. Could be helpful. I did um, let Paul know that, um, when he came in and discussed this during our tax transaction. That we hadn't budgeted for this in this cycle, but to still come in and put it before you guys, Absolutely. because we're getting ready to budget again, so it could very easily be added yep. to 
-hmm. I don't know if, if they'll decide to get it done this winter um, outside of the budget that they've done. But Appreciate we can certainly. It's probably going to be tough getting it done this year because of the coming into winter. And, but I don't know if there's any used guardrail that Public Works has. or mm -hmm. We can check and see what they got. Definitely there. something we need to look into. Yeah, another another um, kind of downside, coming around that corner, the road tilts yeah, down. Yeah. So there's no, there's nothing that's going to keep them from going. There's no bank Once at they all. Start, it actually nothing, banks the wrong way. Yeah. Once they start, there's nothing stopping them. They just, yeah. um, and that's what we, we've seen. It's getting okay. more mm -hmm. so. Appreciate if you would take time to uh, to look into that and um, thank you for for hearing us. Yeah, thank, thank you all for coming in. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Good night. Have a good night. Okay. Shelly, treasurer's report. Yes, for sure. You got the check warrant in front of you. I sure do. Okay, has everybody seen the check warrant? Yes. Yep. yep. Can I have a motion? I'll make a I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion, I have a second. Now all in favor? Aye. Aye, you have it. Five, zero. Okay. Seeing that, okay. So, it's been a busy month. Uh, we did good. It was very slow collecting. I'm still shocked that it's as low as it was, just how slow everything was coming in. But we ended the day on the 31st uh, with an outstanding balance of $237,986.39, which is fairly average. Right around that 200 mark is average. Um, so it was a normal tax collection season. I did mail my delinquent letters today. They should be arriving in the mailboxes Friday and Saturday. Give them a day to cool down before they come in and see me. <laughs> Not one person brought a six pack, so I was a little disappointed. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then when you add the 237,986,39 to, uh, we had roughly 40,000 left from last year. Uh, we are at, uh, outstanding delinquent balance starting the year with $267,905.99. Um, and in the beginning, it goes down kind of quickly with, uh, there's a few that they're escrowed in the escrow payment the mortgage company hasn't paid yet. And there's the simple, I completely forgot. So it'll go down quickly in the beginning and then we'll trickle on and hopefully people still come in and make some payment arrangements with me. Get them off the tax sale list. Um, other than that, I have put your light reading material in your mailboxes. This is the official audit that's done, and I don't have anything else for you. Okay. Unless you have something else for me. We're going to go straight from taxes into budgeting. Okay. And then Thanks. election time. Huh? And then election time. And then election, yes. I'm pretty well straight out from July until after town meeting day. And then I'll get a little break. Okay, thank you, Shelly. Wendy, down in court. Five minutes from, I don't even remember when we were here together before, the 19th of October. And it was Richard, Mary, and Vern that were here. Okay, can I have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Vern, second by Mary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. No, let's have it. Thank you. Um, and just a couple of quick updates. The library is having their craft fair and vendor show on November 18th from 9 to 3 at Highgate Elementary School. There's also a craft bazaar happening that same day at the Methodist Church from 9 to 2. So you can hit them all. They're super close together. And Operation Happiness. They publish um, information. It's a program through the United Way um, providing baskets of food and gifts for children under age 16. Um, Highgate residents, um, this is posted all over town on our website, on our social media pages. Every town has different instructions. For Highgate residents, if you are interested in the program 
and could use a little assistance. Um, the number to call is 868-1601 from 6 to 8 p.m. between November 6th and the 17th and to please leave a message. Um, people that want to make donations to the program um, can contact the United Way of Northwestern Vermont. Um, so again, this is posted all over for food baskets, toys for uh, kids under 16. I get residents, you call in November 6th to the 17th at 868-1601 from 6 to 8 p.m. to get your name in the program. And I think that'll do it for me. You can move on. Okay. Town Administrator, Sharon Bossett. Okay, so Richard, you have two contracts in front of you. One is for the Recreation Department ICE contract for Maha. If you want to sign that one. Yep, you need a motion, right? Yes. It, it, it can have a motion for Maha ICE rental. Is it at 175 an hour? It is. Yes, yeah, 175 an hour. I'll make the motion. A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Richard, that's just for your signature. And then the same with the next one, which is a contract with. Uh, Northwest Regional Planning for our grants and aid program for the highway department. And it's a straight $1,000 fee. Okay. Can I have a, a, a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Um, motion, I have a second. Second. I have a second by Kyle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, then um, Heidi is working with uh, Grand Isle Tobacco Prevention Coalition and Northwest Medical Center to have the Great Highgate Smokeout Thursday, November 16th. Um, there are prizes available. You can contact me by calling me my office number, which is 4922, or emailing Town admin at highgatevt.org. Sign up, commit to quitting at least one day, and you're entered into the drawing for prizes. Next, um, I would like a motion for whether or not you'd like to take over Deso Drive. Uh, because our 45 days is up on 1116 that we agreed to make a decision and notify the uh, homeowners. We do have a, a motion. Oh, we do a motion. Oh, okay, we have a discussion. Can you have a discussion first? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll break the ice. If, if we if we make that commitment for Diesel Drive, what position does that put us in for other other avenues that for us to have to be able to do? We're gonna have we're gonna have Corey Lane to come back to us and say that you know you accepted Diesel Drive. You know, and in the way I understand it, talking with Sharon. That it could bring us in some litigation. Yeah. Okay. You know, I you know. That's what I've understood. Um, that could bring us in litigation if we don't. Well, if we do, if we do accept, do so. This is my opinion on this is simple. I I've said from day one I've got to believe there's some kind of solution to this, but. We've gone around and around. We've talked to several people. Um, there's got to be a way of seeing that these roads are up to the 76 compliance. 
Um, I believe that was something that mm -hmm. Scott brought up that there's no engineer stamp that certifies that these roads are at the 76 compliance. But even if they are at this point, we simply don't have the resources to take care of these roads. Right. Um, this is where the rubber hits the road in this whole thing. Um, I don't know what we do. Uh, we simply don't have uh, the people power, nor the trucks really, to take care of these all these roads. Um, and I don't know how we, we, we can take one more on without coming up to a, 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 some kind of a, either hire more people and get more equipment. And, and but I don't know what other alternative there is. Um, we can't, we can't hire private, we can't hire private to do it. We can't, because of legal reasons, we can't, there's, we've looked at many different ways of trying to help out and do it and do this. And uh, there, there is no easy answer. The big, the big thing for me, and I've been doing this for a little while, but the A76 standard, which we've gone over a few roads about that, they have to be up to standard. And if they're not, then the town's liable for anything that happens once we accept the road. And that's my worries. These roads are already built. If they were a new road being built, possibly you build it to the A76 standard, we could say at least lean towards yes. These roads are already built. We don't know what lies underneath. We don't know the water system underneath, the drainage system. And if we accept somebody else's problem, the town's liable for that long story short. It rolls downhill and then all the other taxpayers get the bill to fix that road, bring it up to standard. That's Apple or what you call it, the uh, horse before the cart kind of thing. We, the roads got to be up to standard first and we don't know if these roads are. And if we're going to do that, then the testing has to be done. The owners or the property owners or the homeowner has to show, the homeowner association has to show what's up to A76 standards. Which I think we went, what was the one road that we had a case study in already? Which there were some questions about. Corey Lee. Corey, was it Corey Lee? Yeah, so, Corey Lee. Um, they tried, I don't think, I think they decided it weren't quite up to A76. So now we got these, all these other roads to include. I live on a private road and I don't mind nowhere close to A76. I'm not even going to ask the town. I wouldn't even think about it. But that's my worry is that if we take over these roads that are not up to standard, we end up eating it. The taxpayers end up eating it. Um, and then the secondary thing is to help. We're, if you watch these, you'll see that we've been trying to hire people here for the last year and a half, two years. It's just hard to hire people, especially with the qualifications we need to drive the trucks and the plows. Um, at this point, I'll just throw, throw my vote in right now. I, I, I hate to say it, I say it, no, I wish we could help everybody, but we can't right now. I can tell you that the Planning Commission has been searching for partial answers to this problem. And that is to tack on an impact fee when someone comes in and does a development. So that not only have we changed our bylaws to say, okay, we need a stamp on your plot that says, this is engineer approved A76, which that would take that piece out of it. And then by having the planning commission look at impact fees and what that could go towards in the future, when you do an impact fee, it has to go towards something specifically. So you could have an impact fee that's specifically for uh, a new highway truck or for um, a new fire truck or something that would help better the entire town, not just that development. Yeah, period. So they are looking at those things now. So we're trying to figure out how to help more people. I, I, I don't mean to throw my, my hat too loud in the ring, but I do want to ask if we're looking at budgeting, Shelley, like you said we are now, does it make sense for us to be able to, and I saw the list that was generated around the roads that we have here in, in Highgate. <coughs> Does it make sense, and I'm thinking out loud, for us to try to put a dollar figure to adding those on and looking what that <coughs> at least looks like to give ourselves an idea on between uh, either hiring employee, trucks, whatever we need to do, what that dollar figure would look like. That's just for us to look at before we even take an avenue to go down and look at the feasibility. 
I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that gives us an idea of at least a direction to go. And then from there, we can at least try to make an educated decision on a direction to go with it. So I don't know if the, how the board feels about that, but at least we are, we're, we're in good faith as well, trying to be able to find, as Kyle said, a solution, some way to be able to make the taxpayers that live on those roads um, be able to get the services that they deserve because they're paying for them. Um, as I said, I'm just thinking out loud, maybe at some point we, we, we look and, and, and try to break that down and see what that looks like. Um, it might be hard. I think the biggest cost would be salary. Yep. And then future paving, maintenance yep. of, of the road, which every year that goes by, the paving material gets more expensive. Absolutely. So I, I don't know if you want to chime in on, like, I can't imagine you, your crew is uh, down those private roads more than just plowing and, and maintenance. This is a plowing aspect <clears throat> of it would probably be minor compared to like other maintenance. You know, it's only going to add to add a development depending on turnarounds and stuff. You know, you're say high side twenty minutes, um, and then the material is minor as far as winter maintenance goes. But further maintenance, repaving, pavement repair, cover replacements, ditching, that stuff is where you're going to add up. On that aspect of it, um, then you, of course you have to call on their salary, and then you're going to have to have some equipment for them too. So you know, three hundred thousand dollars for another truck, and I don't know where, how many, how many do you add? How many do you not add? I don't know. How do you draw the line right. in the sand? Right. What you're taking over and what you're not. what you would, I don't know if you would have to have some sort of cap on your budget on, if you're looking for a budget on just one. Or to take on say twenty. I don't know what you know. How many do you want? How many do you not want? If you take one, do you have to take them all? Like, there's a lot. And I would suggest <clears> too, <throat> um, doing a little writing around last weekend. I would suggest that we'd want a, an inventory of what we are currently plowing. Yep. Mm. Uh, I happened to be down on Darlene Drive the other day, and that needs some major work and it's not just pavement it's going to have some base work that needs to be done really to make it stand up so if you do that and take every road and take a look at it it's going to be hard to keep up just with the maintenance we have now right. our current paving budget right now we are barely treading water i don't think we're yeah. gaining at all we're no no not with the it costs the inflation of the paving material, uh, what do you uh, pave um, a mile, two miles a year? Yeah. At at a cost of three hundred and thirty thousand yeah. dollars. So that's not very many dead end roads. And at the same time, Scott, I I like to please everybody, but I I know we're not going to. But I'm also looking at. We get into a place to tell me and stuff. The road always comes up, and I went down through there, and there's a lot of houses on that one. Is dirty road, you know? How do we? I agree with Kyle, you know. I'd like to, but I'd also like to please them too, you know. If we're going to do one, you know, is there a way that we can work around, you know? I totally agree, Richard. I you know, totally agree. I just uh, is, it, is there funding available through grant uh, for like a dirty road connecting paved to paved? Isn't there? There is, are paving grants available, but, but the, we don't always get selected because right, sometimes right, if right. we've been selected, then we get you, put back you to get, the you bottom. You get put to the bottom, 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 bottom of the run. Right. Yes, but like that small. road would be able to get some grant money, I believe, because if I'm Call correctly if it's a paved road connecting paved to paved. We're able to get money from the state to help pay for that type of road. Is that is that true? Or does anybody know? I don't know that would, specific question. Say either way, yes or no. I don't think you're talking crazy, but I can't say for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Previous like previous slide board position, mm -hmm. the previous town. That I remember this conversation coming up, um, but. Uh, to me that that dirty road should 
be looked at. It can actually pay roads. It can actually pay roads. Yeah. And that would be a great candidate to me for trying to get grant money to where these small roads were on our own. Because Cassidy Road also connects two paved roads. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And probably another more highly traveled than Diesel Drive. Absolutely. All I'm, all I'm trying to do is to be able to have a look at it from the tech. Right. I'm sorry. A different kind of traffic on the Durkee Road or the Cassidy Road yeah. on Diesel Drive. Yeah. Right. I guess what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look at it from their point of view to if we as a board and as a group are at least looking into possibilities and ways of doing this as opposed to we just can't do it because we don't have the people, I think doesn't send the right message. In my opinion, it sends a message that I want to be able to support them you want, and I want you to want be able to. You want a number to be able to. Well, right. it doesn't have to be an exact dollar right. figure. Right. It has, it has right. us. Uh, looking at this is what it's going to cost okay now there's other ways how do we be able to achieve that mm -hmm. so that's why I, I, i'm in support of trying to be able to at least find avenues to try to make this work as opposed to we can't do it because we just don't have the trucks of the people so that's my feeling i agree with you 100 mm -hmm. and i guess that's the way we have to look at this 100%. nick and i are going to sit down and do some budgeting within the next couple of weeks here um so we can try to Pull something together. I don't know if you're looking for like an annual cost. Again, like we don't know without knowing the base of the road. Yep. It's it's hard to know how soon it will need maintenance. That's well, right. And in my, it will need maintenance. In my opinion, for any road to be considered would have to be up to the homeowner association to bring that proof to us. That should not be on the, the town's back to prove that. They should have to hire an engineer, pay for whatever drill, core, sample, whatever, and they come to us and say, this is what we've got. The stamp. Yeah. The, the yeah. stamp that Scott was talking about Absolutely. weeks ago. And that would be up to the homeowner association to bring that proof. And then we go from there. That's right. That takes that, eliminates that piece out of the puzzle, so yeah. now we can move forward. Nobody is even considered for this unless it meets that standard. Yep. That, that, that should be on the homeowner association, not the town, to prove that. So that would be the first step, in my opinion. Um, they could come up with something. I'm like not a road foreman. No, whether they were paved and how long they measured last. How many inches of asphalt right. was laid and yep. the whole thing. We'll come up with something. So. So, circling right back to where yep. we were. Absolutely. We have to make a decision on these. Um, Regretfully, I make a motion that we are we, we don't take the rover at this time. Second. That was the motion. Okay. okay. We have a second by Mary. So. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Take the road over. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Okay. So it's 4-1. Not to take the road. Okay. Um, going back a little bit, uh, Kyle, you had asked before about an LED yes. sign. So I did a little looking. Depending on what you were looking for for a sign, a solar sign with LEDs, and say it had your curves in it. Uh, you're looking anywhere from fifteen hundred to eight thousand dollars, depending on how fancy you want to be. <laughs> fifteen hundred is fancy enough, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, eight thousand bucks. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is that in any V trans right away, of course, we have to have permission, yeah. um, and that would have to go back to their traffic study group as to whether or not they would allow you to put one there if you bought it. And that was if you bought it. They are not going to buy it, but so that gives you a, a rough idea of that. We can approach the traffic study group to see if we could be allowed to do that, if that's something that you want to pursue. I would like to. Just my opinion. And I think the sign. Fifteen hundred dollars is cheaper than a guardrail too, if you think that would be well, the uh, Paul Delabruz. Saint Armand. Absolutely, that's exactly what I'm thinking. 
because those really do get your attention. Well, and guardrails are not cheap. And guardrails have to be replaced all the time if they're yeah. ran into. Absolutely, yep. And they will be by the sounds of it that day. It sounds yeah. like that's yeah, going to be a, a lot. I'm not saying we should lay a guardrail in there, but without that sign, the guardrail is probably something that's got to be replaced every year from the sound Usually. of it. So, Nick, did you catch that part of the conversation? I, he walked out as I walked in, so. Okay, so yes, he's asking the select board for guardrails there so that people that don't know how to slow down don't go to the bank. I've got, um, I'm waiting for everything to finally arrive. Um, I have a shipment coming when, uh, Monday, I believe, with the last bit. So I've got some pushover or, I don't even want to say reusable, but plastic delineator posts that I'm going to line from the intersection of Ballard and St. Aaron down the hill, kind of around the corner, and I've got six new chevrons, and I've got a warning sign with a sharp curve and a reduced speed limit. I've got a whole package I put together to put up there. I'm just waiting for it to all come in before we put it in. So hopefully before snow flies, there'll at least be new signage. There'll be a new be corner great. sign, there'll be new chevrons to alert you turn, and then I'll have reflective delineators around the corner as well. And then we talked with Tyler Billingsley a little bit about some other options, and he suggested that we could paint a fog line, the white line on the shoulder of the road on the pavement to help indicate. And he also suggested you could do like uh, a little bit of corner improvement, so you would remove your shoulder for about three feet and then replace it with a larger stone, so it's kind of a, a buffer from rather than going directly off pavement to the grass, you kind of get that. There's just simple possibly, suggestions. Possibly might give you a little traction for you. Maybe. Maybe give you a little But if you're going fast enough, really doesn't. Well, I suggested we just bang it like Talladega. That one. Big car. <laughs> <No. No. laughs> <laughs> speed limit changes a lot of things to it. So. It is, I mean, the speed limit is 50. So that's, that's yeah. another consideration too would be. The speed limit on that curve is 50? Yeah. Five from, zero? From St. Armand Road. At uh, David Gagne's, all the way to 7 is 50. Huh. Oh, okay. Let's get There's that first stat on that. There's that, that first stat on that. Yeah. Everyone was 50. Yeah. Just around that curve, it's you gotta slow them down. Go, it's hard to go 50 once you get past. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah you gotta be working on it. Once you get past Corner, when you're yeah. on no road, to do 50 all the way to 7, you've got to drive aggressive. There's a lot of places. Oh, yes. that, I had no idea that was 50 miles an hour. crazy. Yeah, you qualify. Yeah. 40 is hard. Yeah. So do you have the signage to fix that too? Uh, I could change it, um, but we would have to do... Uh, what did we do on the one group? You were part of that, weren't you? The speed study. Traffic study. Yeah. Traffic speed study. study. Yeah. To, to officially reduce yeah. it. But it's, I mean, it's, it's all easy. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Yeah. That's good like 25. Exactly. Half of fit. I can't believe that's fit. So this, the warning signs for the corner. Go lower than I have. 35, can you? Uh, I believe I put. I don't remember if it was that's 25 state, or 30. That's Road or Town Road. Could you? You can't go lower than 35, can you? This uh, came know. up on Darling Drive Turtle Circle years ago. We have. We're 25 down there. We have a few that are 25. Well, it's posted as 25. I'm not sure if that's like a legal thing. If that's what the actual traffic ordinance states it as, but definitely a reduction would be a, a helpful step. Although I don't know that we even need any of it fifty, but just in that stretch. Okay. Is that considered an unpaved highway? It's paved. It says no lower no lower than thirty five on unpaved highways. It's just a generic. It's all really it's all for, for Vermont it's all speed yeah. Yeah, San Armand Road is 35 from 78 to approximately David County's, and then it switches to 50. Yeah. All the way through. Mm -hmm. So, so nice just by your house, 50? No, I don't. Right, 50 right in front of your house. I don't know if you, you mm -hmm. want to have the whole thing. I don't know. I just did the study. Huh? No, we did the study. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, just as a side note, 
Jess uh, from the rec department has been promoted to the recreation director. Okay. Um, so she is the boss over there now, so we congratulate her. And then in front of you, you have a letter from SBA, the owners of the cell tower. They would like you to sell their easement and their lease. Um, they're willing to give you $550,000 for it. But Shelly and I were doing a little research this morning and it's not advisable. Yeah. Because uh, currently we receive 25500 a year. Uh, that is before uh, Verizon completely hooks on and signs off. We'd get another 20% with them on the tower plus a 3% increase every year. Uh, you're halfway through your lease, so you stand to gain more than. Right. So. Well, they're not doing this because they're trying to. Exactly. They're trying to yeah. do this money. <laughs> they're not trying to be that sure. They're not trying to do this I'm not, yeah. 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 Just high enough of a number to make you think about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, it was high. That was, I was. Yeah. But I knew there was a, the other side of the story, so. <laughs> So, can I have a motion for a yay or nay on? Um, I'd make a motion to not accept the lump sum payment. Uh, second? I'll second. Okay. All, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All Aye. opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, I'll Aye. give you a quick grant update. 2272 Meachie Road, the trailer and all of its garbage have been removed. Um, we were in a little bit of a quandary with water rights because the water rights actually go to two lots there, not just one. So we are dealing with FEMA on that, but otherwise that property is finished. Um, 1030 Monument Road is the new FEMA buyout and we have just put out for uh, bids for appraisals. So that part process has just started. The transfer station rights are ready to begin in the spring of 2024 to fix the current slides. Um, the slide that was new this year, we are still going head to toe with FEMA on an appeal. So we think we have a pretty good case and that'll also help the county get their money. Um, Macy Road slide, we only had half the funds available for the project. We and Northwest Regional Planning have put together a request for funds that were remaining uh, from when they did the Missiscoy Bridge from Swamp to Elbert. So we have our, <coughs> our name in the hat for some of that money. The airport, uh, we have all the paperwork into economic development. We should hear any day about uh, a notice to proceed, so we should be able to go out to bid this fall and start construction first thing in the spring. Um, village wastewater, they're going to do some additional testing over the winter, and we are applying for more grant funds just so we can have ourselves covered and get as much of that fully funded as we can. Um, the village core, we are looking for partners that want to work with the town to help develop that property over there. We do have a very interested party uh, concerning senior housing. And I have had some commercial interest. Someone has reached out and shown some interest in maybe putting a restaurant, a cafe sort of thing over there. Um, Library Community Center, uh, they are in their final design um, phase and they have pretty much nailed down a location where they'd like to see that go. 
the arena. We're still waiting for the $408,000 from the Welch uh, appropriation, but we're also waiting for a federal budget. So um, we have a brick grant out that we're waiting for notice, which should be any day, that would study the whole Macy Road and try to give us a long-term solution on that erosion problem. Uh, we might be able to work with UVM. Lisa Hango sent out a message saying that UVM would like to work closer with the communities. And uh, it would be really great if we could find an engineering class that would take this on as a semester project to do the yeah. testing and to really look at that and see if they can come out. Maybe there's some out of the box solution for this tremendous problem that we have. So we're crossing my fingers there. Uh, I am putting in some grants for fire equipment. The fire department would like about $44,000 worth of equipment. So we're gonna put in for grants for that and see if we get that funded. Uh, REC also has an energy assessment that's gonna happen next week on the 8th. They're gonna come in and give us uh, what they call a level two assessment and they'll look and see how we can save money over there, make ourselves more energy efficient. And they have about $500,000 worth of extra cash that could go toward projects like that. So first step is the assessment. Second step is getting the funding to put their recommendations into play. Um, and the last one is uh, once December comes, we'll apply for an USDA uh, critical facility grant to put toward our next plow truck. So the plow truck that we have ordered uh, will apply for a $50,000 loan or a grant to help take the, the burden out of the capital improvement plan. So that is us in a nutshell. Uh, for select board, the only thing I have is happy grandpa. Uh, Richard is a grandpa to twins. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Bless your heart. Our little girl. Yes. Yeah. Little girl. Yeah. Who had the twin girls? Laura. Laura. Yeah. She's got a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah. She got a two-year-old and two newborns. Do you know her father? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So that's all. Congratulations. Thank you. Sharon, is there any news on the house next door? I talked to our lawyer. He was reaching out, but he had not heard anything. Uh, I have not seen any evidence of anyone being in there. So I think they're waiting for an appraisal. Yeah. There's still power in there? <laughs> Somebody called the power company and had them pull the power out. And somebody else called back and said, put the power in. So we're not sure who called who to do what, but currently there is power back in there. <coughs> Anybody live there? Not that I, I keep watching, please. but Facebook. please. <laughs> keep expecting some homeless people to go in there, but so far I haven't seen any activity. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I got one thing I'd like to put out there and on the agenda. <laughs> I'm just going to throw this day out, the 17th of December, our, uh, our, our awaited parade. And that, that weekend will be the 15th through the 17th. Our, our, our light, our Christmas light display. Anybody else have anything? I do have some things for executive for you. Okay. That would include uh, Nick, Wendy, and Shelly. Okay. Can I have a motion to come out of a regular meeting and go into a yes? I'll make that motion. Motion. And I have a second by Mary. All in favor? Aye. 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 